In this video, we're going to be learning how to stabilize video using Virtual Dub D Shaker. So let's get started. Now I'm going to post four links in the description down below. The first link is for Virtual Dub itself. If you're shooting in 1080p or less, I'd recommend the 32-bit version since all filters have a 32-bit option. But if you're going to be shooting in 4K like me, then you need the 64-bit version and that only works with an i7 or certain AMD processors. Now the second link is an input plugin that allows you to open more video types in virtual dub, including mp4 files. The third link is a compression codec so you can compress your video to a much smaller file size while maintaining its quality. And the fourth link is the dshaker filter that we're going to be using to stabilize our video. Alright, so once you've got all your files downloaded, you're going to unzip virtual dub. You don't have to install it once you've extracted it. That's it. It's good to go. Next, you're going to unzip your dshaker and you're going to copy the contents into your virtual dub folder. After that, you're going to extract your input plugin. Open that up. Now it says plugins 32, plugin 64. You're just going to pick the one of whatever virtual dub version you installed. You're going to copy those contents, go into your virtual dub plugins, and paste it. Now finally, you're going to double click your X264 codec, and you're going to install that. And now you're ready to go. Alright, so now let's open up Virtual Dub, find a test file, drag it in. Now you can right click the video and go to zoom 50%. You can do that with this big part on the right side as well. So what you're going to have is your initial input here on the left side and your output file on the right side. So your first step is to go to Video, Filters, Add, Find your dshaker, hit OK. Now you want to select pass 1 first. Make sure it's square pixels. All of this stuff should be automatically set based on the footage you inputted. Scale, I go to full, most precise. Everything else I leave as the default. Hit OK. OK. Now you're going to go to file. Run video analysis pass. And just let that run. Now the first pass basically takes your footage and interprets how much your camera is shifted frame by frame in terms of X and Y translation, as well as rotation about each axis. Now when we do our pass 2, the filter is going to compensate for the judder we created when we are recording, and it's going to zoom in and shift the picture according to the analysis in pass 1, and that's going to result in a nice smooth picture. Now the file I inputted was something like 100 or 200 megabytes, and you can see the projected file size is over 10 gigs. The reason for that is because it's uncompressed footage after you put it in virtual dub. And this is why we needed that H.264 codec so that we can compress it back when we export it as an AVI file. Okay, now that that's done, we're gonna go to video, filters, add. Now once again, we're gonna select the D shaker, hit okay. This time we're gonna click pass two. Now at the top right, you can see pass two parameters I have it ticked same destination properties as source, so that means basically everything is taken care of for us. Resampling, I choose bicubic, or the best quality. Now for edge compensation, if you choose none, you're going to have large black borders that shift around. So what I choose is adaptive zoom average plus fixed zoom. So what this does is it zooms in your footage slightly so that as the frames are shifting around, you don't see a black border shifting around with your video. So now we're going to hit OK. Make sure to untick your pass 1. Hit OK. And now at the bottom left, you see a play button with an O. We're going to click that. And now you can see on the left side, this is the unedited footage. And on the right side, that's our stabilized footage. So we're going to let this finish playing out. And then we're going to export it. And we're done. Now one thing I think I should note is it's really important to rely on post-stabilization software as little as possible because if you shoot a very shaky video, you're going to get a weird blur effect because the filter can only do so much. So a good rule to live by is film as if you don't have the option to stabilize afterwards and then use the dshaker to correct any minor shaking that you get. Now one thing you don't want to forget is to compress your video. So go to video, compression, choose your x264 codec we downloaded, hit OK. And now we're good to export. Now to export, you go to File, Save as AVI. 
name it whatever you want, and hit save. So now you can see the file's been compressed. It's projected to be roughly 70 or 80 percent the file size that I started with. All right, so now in full screen, this is the initial footage I had. You can see it's very bumpy, shaky, and this is the footage after it's been stabilized. Now I'm just opening this video to show you if I didn't choose the borderless option. You can see along the edges, you see little tilting black bordering. That's what happens if you don't zoom in. Alright, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comments below. See ya.